Ah, uh, Ethiopia. My shame. My greatest loss so far. No, I don't call it a loss. It was a draw. My last Ethiopia video was a draw. Anyway, to make up for that, we will try and try again. And today we will go for not only the Lion Roars once more, but also the Lion King. And no, I don't mean the 1991 animated version or the horrible live action remake. No, no, it's an achievement where we need to control some British territory. So let's go. This is the 1936 start. Iron Man mode on. Historical AI focuses on. All right. First order of business. War. Let's organize the army. Now, you've all seen Torior's video, I'm assuming. So I, I don't need to elaborate on the territories, where to defend and why to defend there. But I'll just quickly settle this. I prefer to organize my army like this. Um, I put all of the militia in one army and I give them to this guy, Nasibu, because he's a hill fighter. I will set these guys up in the hills. That's one, two, three. Two of these are hills with a river crossing and one of them is mountain. So this is excellent defensive terrain. Trust me, this is the best southern front you can have. You're going to take these two guys and just walk them over there. You're going to take these two guys and just strategically redeploy them over there. To the north, we'll take one just one of these militia units and move them over to the other army. So we have an army with nine for the south and 12 for the north. The one with 12 units, we're going to take Biru here. Ayaleo Biru. Because he's a mountaineer and everything to the north is mountains. And we are going to defend the tile of Gondar, the tile beneath Makal, and that's it. Wait, not quite. We're going to take one, two, yeah, four units. And we're going to set up a separate line here. Four units, we're going to stack on Desi. The reason we're stacking these guys on Desi is because of this territory here. Ausa, the Sultanate of Ausa, is treacherous, very, very treacherous. Once the Italians push past Makal, I think it's either Adwa or Makal, doesn't matter. The Italians will send an ultimatum to Ausa. On historical, they will always accept and they will simply be annexed and your border with Italy gets larger. So we put some units on Desi so we can immediately move into the capital, the mountainous capital of Afar, control the territory and have an excellent mountainous defense for the north. We'll move these guys south, we'll move these guys south. Everybody has to move south. We have to get out of here. The defense will sort itself out in a little bit. Research. We we have two slots and a horrible, horrible research penalty. Doesn't really matter. Let's just get support weapons one and... <sighs> Part of me wants to get the better guns. Another part of me wants to get the electronic mechanical engineering to research more stuff quicker or even get industry to get more efficiency. I'm going to go with better guns, but there's really no way to go wrong here. Civilian factories. We have two. One is in use for civilian goods and the other one is available for now. Now, if I were to build something, we have one build slot and it would take until 1955. So that's not worth it. Let's just not build anything for now and instead trade our only civilian civilian factory away for some steel. And I'm going to trade with Sweden because I trust the Swedes. That leaves us with focuses. Now there are a couple of options here. We could go straight into rally around the emperor, rush down here, the emperor stays. We must have the emperor stay for the Lion King. Boarding the train is objectively better, but it's not compatible with the achievement we're going for. So the emperor will stay, the lion stands firm, learning from the enemy and volunteers. What I like to do, and I, I may be wrong here, but what I like to do is start off with the second Italo Ethiopian War to give us that temporary boost, that little jolt of strength to help us hold on a little bit. Then go rally around the Emperor. The Emperor stays. I then go to the Abuna for a little bit of extra base stability because we are low, low, low on stability and I don't want strikes. We can still get strikes. And then Rush Lion stands firm, learning from the enemy and volunteers. You could go Heroes of Ethiopia, but I'm not using any of these advisors. I will not be using irregular infantry and learning from the enemy is just plain better because it moves the balance of power in the way that I want to the right. It gives us 10% factory output and a bunch of irrelevant things. But first two that I named are enough. Speaking of balance of power, we need to move the balance of power in the right direction. Currently, it's on the Mesafin side and we want it on the Mequon inside, mainly because it has something to do with the army, the way the army works for Ethiopia. It currently runs on the Chitet. It's a militia, essentially. What I want is to expand the Mehel Safari. That is the preferred professional army. And to do that, we need to move the balance of power more to the right. So for now, this is going to be locked 
will get there eventually by events and certain focuses. We'll move this bar or to the right, but we'll make use of it the way it is now because Mesa Fint gives bonuses to the infantry, well, to the army, while giving penalties to the economy. On the other hand, Mequanent gives penalties to the army and bonuses to the economy. It's a little give and take there. You don't want this to go too far either way. Anyway, let's start with our first focus, Italo-Ethiopian War. Oh, fun fact, develop Shewa. That is the first focus to your massive industrial tree. Not so fun fact, almost all of these are 70 days and suck. But develop Shewa gets locked almost instantly because it requires you to control all of your own states. And there's no way in hell you're holding on to Tigray. I'm sorry. Like, if you can do it, I'm impressed. I don't think it's possible to hold on to Tigray and not lose too much. That said, we have our setup done, so... Let's get going. So the Italians are going to attack in the north here. What you're going to do is withdraw these units in good order. Keep withdrawing. The south here, these guys should get out before the Italians start their attack. But if they get attacked and get caught before they are able to withdraw, just forcibly make them move. You don't want to fight them at the border. You want to fight them at your prepared positions. It's going to be difficult enough as it is. And the south is getting ready. The north is getting ready. Now we just have to keep an eye out on the Sultanates of Aousa. And we now have 10 political power and we can make a choice here. Some people say you don't need this. Other people swear by it. This gives us an extra unit and a general. The general isn't all that good. The extra unit also isn't all that good, but it's an extra unit and things are already not going in our favor. It moves the balance of power slightly to the left. We can still fix that later on. So Personally, I just recall Balcho Safo. It's 10 political power for a free unit that comes with its own guns. That's a no-brainer in my book. I could be wrong. And Ausa's gone. It's now Italy. So I'm going to delete this front line here for a little bit. Two of these units are going to move into Ausa, the capital. And these two will stand by. Keep an eye on this desert province. Yes, you could take that province instead of the mountains. But it's desert. It has zero defensive value, massive attrition, plus it can be attacked from two sides. While you take Aosa, it has the victory point, that's all you need, and it has mountains, and it can only be attacked from one side. It is plain better. It is simply better. And there we go. We have the units in position. We've taken Aosa. We're going to do a new front line. We're going to draw an actual front line with an attack order just because we are feeling it right now. And this will allow this general to start building up some skills. Not only is he going to get infantry leader, but he's also going to start building experience for organizer. Very, very valuable. And we'll turn this guy into an absolute chad. We'll do the same to the south once they've taken the tile here. All right, second Italo-Ethiopian war is in. It's a small bonus, but it is going to be helpful early game. We're not going to continue down the rest of this branch just yet. No, we're going to rally around the emperor and go grab ourselves some volunteers. Now, there is one weak in the northern front. It's the tile here uh, above Desi. You could fall back to the tile underneath Gondar. That will give you a mountain province that's also behind the river crossings. The AI will never break it, but I like a little bit of risk in my life and I don't want to have to recapture all these mountain tiles I've already given up. So if you don't feel like defending this tile, fall back one tile, perfectly acceptable. It might even be better. I am not about that life. I'm here to suffer. As for the south, this is more than okay. Now I'm going to be cutting a lot of this out. There's a billion videos about how to defend as Ethiopia. You can check out Torior's video. You can check out my previous video. The initial war is relatively easy. And while I'm waiting for more political power. Uh, every now and then we have options like this. Uh, depending on where the balance of power is, we get some options to improve our country and 25 political power for free infrastructure in our entire country that we currently control. That's a no brainer. Oh, good Lord. This is pain. Like I know micro isn't something most of you guys enjoy, but you're going to have to for this run. <laughs> there is no way that you could just draw a front line and let the AI handle it. You're going to have to go hands on here. Cycling units is going to be be key to victory in this one. And if you think you're going to lose, feel free to take a last stand or fall back to this position here, slightly more favorable. Like I said, this is going to be constantly under attack. But the upside of that is this general will constantly be getting trickster experience. All right, the emperor stays and now we continue. I could go for the lion stands firm. We have to take this path anyway. All good stuff. But I want to make a quick stop here at the Abuna. This will give us 5% stability, 50 political power, and that 5% stability is going to move us over the 50% stability mark. Stability is always good. You want as much of it as you can get. 35 days, it's relevant.
relatively short. This moves us out of strikes territory. As long as we're below 50% stability, we are in danger of getting strikes. And for some reason, I think because our stability went up, the game decides that we no longer need that one factory for consumer goods. Okay, that's great. That means I can now trade for steel. Sweden, give me your steel. In case that doesn't happen, for whatever reason, sometimes the calculation gets a little funky. Just go up to war economy. That's also going to free up that factory. But because I don't have to right now, I'm not going to go up to war economy. I will before this war is over, trust me. But instead, I will now hire either the staunch loyalist because he gives me more political power and a little bit more stability, would also bring me over 50. Or I could hire Imru Haile Selassie, get me more stability, more research speed. But right now, I think I want this guy, the Minister of Finance, more factory output, fewer factories on consumer goods, and the like a research penalty goes down. This is overall going to give me more guns. But like I said, if you're still stuck with all of your factories on consumer goods, just go up to war economy, trade for that steel, and you'll be making guns at full power. Speaking of guns, a couple more for another unit. All right, the line stands firm. Now we learn from the enemy. And this general can now be an infantry expert. Division attack, always good. Ambusher is usually my go-to for infantry, but Ethiopia gets terrible penalties to entrenchment, so I don't bother with entrenchment as Ethiopia. As you can see here, traditional warfare really nerfs your army in the entrenchment department and pretty much everywhere else. So we'll need to fix that through our focus tree. But for now, this guy is now an infantry specialist and we'll start adding him to our military cabinet. Where is he here? Ailu Biru. Plus, he is going to rank up and become even better. And this man will be next in line, but it seems the Italians have somewhat stopped attacking to the south. He hasn't really gotten any experience. Oh, speaking of, never mind. They've just woken back up. Anyway, it should be, should be going well. Our temporary morale boost has run out, but I think we are well in the stage of the game where we don't really need that small boost anymore. All right, volunteers are in. We cannot continue. Where is the damn thing? We cannot continue to faire accompli. What this does is issue an ultimate him to Italy and we can only do that after we've retaken all of our territory. We want to wait with taking this one until we've pushed Italy out of Africa. They should give it but, but more on that later. Now we're going to go with renewed offensive, victory in the desert or northern thrust and then lessons of war to improve our armies. But before we go that route I want to take a quick trip here Ecole Militaire Haile Selassie. Not only does that unlock our military branch it's also going to give us an event that will give us a spirit of the academy which is the first one here. Gun deficit is certain looking a lot better. Still 4,000 guns short, but uh, with our lines being stable and our units actually having some weapons, the Italians are not going to be able to do anything. We're actually positive on guns. Well, we have a massive deficit, but we're getting some instead of constantly losing them. Mighty Ethiopian economy. Look at it go. There we go. Uh, Premier, uh, Ecole Militaire Hali Salassie Premier gives us this event where we have three options for the Ethiopian military. The top is going to improve our infantry and irregulars, giving us 10% more attack and locking us into bold attack. Officers get more attack when they level up. Attack is always great. This is one of my favorites. The second one does the same for defense, giving us more defense for our divisions. Not that great, honestly. And then the meticulous preparation bonus is going to give us our generals more planning and logistics, which is pretty good in Africa and give us more army experience overall. My choice here would be the top one or the bottom one, depending on what you feel like. Uh, personally, this can be very strong with planning and logistics. If you're fighting in Africa, this is going to give your supply consumption a nice little bonus. Army experience gain is nice, but not game breaking. The top is my go-to, honestly. 10% additional attack plus more attack on your generals means attack, 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 attack. You can crush the enemy or at least go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. That is what we'll do. We're gonna hire three more units on a high priority and assign them to the Northern Army. So this guy would be full. And if he is using 24 divisions, he'll also get experience for skilled staffer, which might be handy. The more units a good general can use, the better the general becomes, essentially. This guy is already great. Seven planning seven attack. Just wish logistics was a little bit higher, but not bad. Not bad overall. I'm gonna grab radio now for more reinforce rates. And the Italians, there's no way in hell they're gonna be pushing us, honestly. We have more political power. What do we spend it on? More military high command is always a good idea. We can get this guy, army regrouping specialist, but again, he moves the balance of power in a way I don't like. The entrenchment 
specialist. Again, entrenchment's not that strong as Ethiopia, at least not yet. So we're going to start by getting the concealment specialist. Reducing enemy air support is always good. Leaves us with a little bit of political power. Don't think we'll need any of it just yet. So we'll hold on to it for now. Just going to force deploy these guys, get them out into the field as quickly as possible. So this guy can start getting his juicy, juicy bonuses. Oh, and look at the experience gain on these units. These are all veterans. All right, renewed offensive. That gives us a little bit of extra attack. And then we make a choice. Either victory in the desert means we push to the south. And for 90 days in that entire area, we would have 25% extra attack and 50% breakthrough. But the desert isn't that difficult to break through anyway. I don't think it's worth it. Northern Trust, though, we get the same bonuses, but the terrain we'll be fighting in will be ass. Absolute garbage, mountains, mountains, mountains. And the bonuses will shine there. So we're going to go with Northern Trust thrust and we forced a breach here we're gonna push these units north and there and half of them will push in here and then try to cut off this section of the italian line it's gonna be difficult it's certainly not gonna be a cakewalk the italians are very determined to keep pushing but you have to do something just try to attack them whenever they're done attacking you that way they have low organization and you can uh, have a good chance of pushing them back and to the south here you can launch a distractive attack here you don't really have to. It's going to be difficult enough managing all these front lines. Uh, still with a little bit of persistence. Ah, there we go. Another bonus because war escalation went up. With a little bit of persistence, we should be able to push the Italians back. Back from whence they came. Get as many divisions attacking the same points as you can. Overwhelm them with numbers. Just keep going. Just keep going. Now, nowhere am I going to claim that this is easy. <laughs> it should eventually be doable. Oh, this is such ass. I don't like mass assaults. I really don't. But this is the only one that is realistically going to give us a couple of useful bonuses. Plus, it leads down here here to where are we where are we supply consumption reduction on vast offensives honestly it's gonna be the best choice for now we can switch out later maybe but for now mass assault is gonna carry the day oh i feel so dirty i don't know if it was luck or the ai had a master genius plan it just didn't work and i ended up getting pushed all the way back ah germany wants to start sending us guns so from oh that's pretty early from now on i'm gonna keep begging germany for guns once we get more guns our units will be stronger i'll also be able to change this template to 10 with oh well every day that passes we get a little bit stronger italy gets a little bit weaker because they are burning a lot of manpower and guns here unfortunately they can take those losses i can't this is already a lot of my manpower gone a lot of my military capacity has been reduced but we can hold and we can strike back anyway um while the north is looking spicy i am going to try something in the south i'm going to try an encirclement i'm going to push past this one horse and then move to wall wall that would cut this entire thing off, circle it entirely. I can then destroy those units and either reset my front or push south and throw the Italians into disarray. I'm going to keep the pressure up to the north, though, see what I can make happen. Honestly, I just need to take this port. If I can take their damn port, I have them by the balls so to speak. Ah, damn. I thought I was being clever, but the AI saw right through me. Meanwhile, research, focus on the infantry while you're keeping the industry going. Three factories is not a lot, but keeping our army afloat at least. Now, I got a level with you guys. This is the worst Ethiopia campaign I've played so far. I'm a little stumped at how well Italy is holding on to the north here, but a couple more levels of escalation and this should be fine. Italy is going to get hurt by enemy desertions, which will strengthen us. Italy is going to then take another hit here with uproar in the colonies we should be able to do this still and we're only going to get stronger as we develop shewa i've got a bunch of political power that i'm not really using i'm going to use a little bit of it to extort exhort extort exhort heroism to get rid of that combat casualties debuff all right shewa developed and i'm gonna go with a state-owned industry next to move the balance of power in the correct direction and then state bank of ethiopia again to move the balance of power in the correct direction enemy desertion so this happens at what level eight yeah level eight the italians lose manpower they lose equipment and that equipment is transferred to us 1200 guns which is great 1500 manpower and some artillery and support equipment not fantastic but it's something and now look at the low strength on all these italian divisions this is the time now we strike back now we can force them off their damn port now we take what what is ours? Ugh, regional ruler, what do you want? Ah, an extra mill. I could take the extra military factory, which would be great, but I need the balance of power going the other way, and a little bit of base stability would be nice. 
Sorry, man. Okay, so with this, we'll take their port. Come on, just take the damn port. Keep pushing, keep attacking from uh, different sides to make sure they can never retake the port. And we have the port, and with that, let's just roll this entire northern flank, and then we can turn our full strength to the south. Oh, that Italian's dessert event is just amazing. It just completely breaks all of their divisions, and that is the perfect opportunity for you to strike back. Oh, look at them go. Look at these Italian losses. Oh, yes. There we go. Oh, look at these encirclements. Look at the Italians die. Okay, Italy offers peace. You could take this now, and we would take Eritrea, Jubaland, and Afar. Pretty much everything except for this, Somaliland. They're not gonna hand over Somaliland. What the event offers you depends on what you're occupying at the time. We could take this and settle. However, I don't want to. Okay, in two days, fair complete finishes. I have my fingers and my toes crossed, hoping, 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 hoping that Italy accepts. Like I said, I have no way to influence this as the player. Let's see how much we've cost them. So we have lost almost 200,000 brave Ethiopian warriors, but we have killed... <laughs> 743,000 Italians. Well, actually 655 and 88 died via unknown means. There we go. Victory. Italy has agreed. Eritrea, Somaliland, Jubaland, and Afar are signed over to us. And we have our white piece, the Treaty of Roma. Ethiopia is free. And that was the easy part. Now we build up and prepare to take these territories from Britain. We need Garissa. We need Nairobi, we need Nyanza Rift Valley, and we need Tanganyika. So all of this we need to take from Britain. Now we have two paths forward. We just need these four provinces. That is all the cores of Kenya. And we need the province down here, this big one, Tanganyika, for Tanzania. That's all we need for the Lion King. And they're held by the United Kingdom. Now, we could uh, go to all-out war with the United Kingdom, fight him tooth and nail for that useless dirt in Africa. All the while, being on the back foot, probably losing because Ethiopia's industry is not mighty. Or we go another path. A better path, a slightly more cheesy path. We will support anti-colonialist resistance. Trust me, this works. I know what you're thinking. You've probably seen it on Reddit. People complain it doesn't work. The resistance doesn't go up far enough. Trust me. I'll show you. Anyway, we won't need a large army for what we are about to do, so I'll just keep about 10 in the queue. So that, that will be enough, and all of these guys can stick around as well. The Chitet can stay. You could disband them. It, it would just delete the units, but you would not get the manpower or the guns back, so why delete them? I'll just keep them around for now. Anything else other than this focus is up to you. Do whatever you want. You can get the King of Kings, this tree, to boost Haile Selassie, and then still go towards African unity and go get yourself this time for Africa, where you need a bunch of puppets. You could go down your industry path for that much needed industrial boost. You could go down the State Bank of Ethiopia all the way down here to get rid of corrupt bureaucracy. Infrastructure projects leads down to develop the Horn of Africa. I'm actually going to do this one because otherwise I'd get bored. And also very important, standardized technical training and junior officer corps to get rid of your horrible conservative command. Ethiopia can go many different directions, but today we will go the direction of cheese. All right, and the modifier is in. You can see it here. They have their resistance, they had their compliance cut, and this modifier means resistance is going to start ticking up. Initially, it's going to go up to a target of 79%. That's because the AI is still using local autonomy. They will switch over to local police force usually, and that means the resistance target goes down by by 25%. So it'll be stuck at, I think, 54%. 4% resistance target as long as the UK is at peace. That's fine because the UK won't be at peace for much longer. They will go to war with Germany and lose a 10% bonus. As a result, the target will go up to roughly 65%, roughly, give or take a few percents. 65 is all you need. Now we simply wait for this resistance to naturally tick up to its highest possible value. Anything over 60 is perfect. What we do then is look at the second decision. This one pops up once you've prepared resistance. We can send that resistance guns. It's a seven day timer. We give up 1000 infantry equipment. And when the timer runs out, the target province instantly gets 
30% resistance. If we add that 30% to the already existing, hopefully 60 plus at that time, we reach resistance of over 90%. Now let's look at our own country. If resistance hits 90%, rebellion occurs. They will rise up and fight for their independence. Now there's one thing we need to look at here that's very important. The rebellion will only happen if the average resistance is above 90. So for now, you can see the resistance working as intended it is climbing and the resistance target is now 53 percent because the uk has gone to local police force one thing to keep in mind though that this has a limited timer 365 days when the timer runs out the modifier goes away and resistance will stabilize it also means the second decision goes away so if you haven't sent the guns and made your play before the timer runs out you will not be able to a similar decision will pop up again if you go towards african unity for every country in Africa or every territory in Africa. But that is as far as the support anti-colonial resistance goes. So if this runs out, you'll have to get the different focus to try again. And I don't even know if it will work as intended. Still, the cap is 54. The extra 30% will bring us up to 84. That's not enough to trigger the rebellion. And the resistance is slowly going to start ticking back down to its value target 54. So only send the guns when you're ready. You can only do it once once to just send the guns if resistance is over 60 percent hey poland says no that means world war ii has just kicked off and these guys are all at war which means the resistance target is now higher they have less stability and they no longer get the peace bonus so resistance will go up to 60 plus percent perfect absolutely perfect french are even worse off it's gonna go to 86 all on its own oh france you're so terrible all right with everything ready here we could spark a rebellion but i'm gonna wait until this focus finished to see if i get to buy djibouti or i'll have to cheese my way into djibouti no oh! I will get that booty, France. So the French have said no. Fortunately, I didn't trust them. Anyway, I'm going to personally work my way down to the Horn of Africa just for some more cheese. But we'll start our first rebellions here. Both of these territories are single cores. So it doesn't matter that it's only a resistance in these regions. We don't need more provinces to spark rebellions here. Let's start with Djibouti. 80%. That is significant. What if we send them some guns as well? And in seven days, they will rise up against the French. Now, the reason I do this quickly quickly and not after I figure out they don't want to buy it is because once France falls, this region goes to Vichy France. And we could do the same thing to Vichy France, sure. However, Vichy France will be guaranteed by Germany. Djibouti declares war on Vichy France. Germany comes in. Vichy France joins the Axis. You see where this is going? Djibouti joins the Allies and I can't get my hands on Djibouti anymore. So we want to do this to regular France. And once this timer runs out, there will be war. War! Oh, it's Aousa. So Aousa has declared war on the French and by extension the Allies. Now to prevent them from quickly overrunning this section of the British Empire, I'll spark a rebellion there as well. And in seven days, this should all be solved. Oof. Just in time. See, now we have a Somali Sultanate also at war with the Allies. Okay, I'm quickly going to explain a few things and my future decisions because a lot of you will be wondering why I'm doing the things that I'm doing. First off, I will be justifying on these two territories so I can annex them. I don't have to, but the problem with these two is they don't have a land connection to any of the Allies. As a result, they can only be capitulated by naval invasions. It's very unlikely that a naval invasion will succeed here because the US, sorry, the UK and France are busy. We will justify on these territories. I will capture them. I will not take the entire stuff. For the British Somaliland, I'm going to capture everything except Hargeisha, their current capital. That would result in me controlling the province, but not having ended the war. That will be fine. As for Djibouti here, I'm going to take the tile to the north, the airplane, and then surround their army in Djibouti itself so they don't fall to a naval invasion. And this is, I, I know, this is a bit long-winded and has nothing to do with the achievement. It's just a nice to know thing. Okay, so we have uh, 90 days left in Garissa. So within 90 days, I'll need to start sending guns to Kenya. Resistance is at 48 in Tanzania, so we should have enough time to get resistance in this entire region up, and you'll see what happens. As for the Somali Sultanate, yeah, we're just about ready to gobble them up within 15 days. These guys don't join the Axis, they're non-aligned and very far away from the faction leader, so they will sign non-aggression pacts, but not actually join any factions. We're gonna declare war on them. The other justification keeps ticking, and what we'll do is move to create an encirclement of the capital of Hargeisha, 
The UK is gonna offer you to join the Allies at this point because we're both fighting the same target. You say yes, it invalidates all of the rebellion mechanics. Say no, just go away. It's so funny to me that I can improve the infrastructure in these countries while actively fighting them in a war. Well, more occupying at this point, but it's so funny. Can I do it again or was that it? I'm gonna take these decisions just to see what they do. I don't actually expect them to work because I'm at war with these countries. No way! No way! This is so stupid. I didn't even have to fight them. That's so stupid and I love it. Look! They're mine. I didn't even have to fight them. Plus, I get all the stuff that's there. Oh, somehow there's no stuff here. Anyway, I can now unify the Horn of Africa. Bada bing, bada boom. And it's all my core. This is so stupid and I love it. Now I just need to wait for Kenya and Tanzania to go tits up and we're done. Well, it looks like Belgium got a whole lot bigger. Tanzania is about to go tits up. So is Kenya. So just a little bit more patience and we'll have everything we need perfectly lined up for us. Now Tanzania is really putting up a fight. And there we go. Kenya has signed a white peace. Just as I said, nothing happens to this country. They're independent. And on the line, they didn't lose any of their territory, and that's it. That's all the UK does to them. Nothing. And now we justify our war goal. We're gonna come in. And uh, I'm also gonna start fermenting more anti-British resistance. Because it's funny. I just gotta wait for Tanzania. There we go. Tanzania and Belgium have signed a white peace. Again, fully intact, fully independent, fully non-aligned. Nothing happens i can justify on them as well perfect these guys are also not gonna pick up guarantees because one we have not really generated all that much will tension so the allies don't care two they are non-aligned so the allies really don't care and three they have a truce with the allies so nobody's really that interested in giving them a guarantee all right let's take kenya again no guarantees no friends just our land and because it's just us in this war now the points will not be spread out to the point where nobody can take anything no we can take whatever we want. I still don't quite understand why the AI doesn't really do anything to these countries, but I will make very good use of the fact that they don't. And we have Kenya. We're the only people who get points. They don't get scattered across everybody else. So we can take all that we want. Submit our demands, confirm and exit. And we have all the land we need. Now set up on Tanzania and do the same here. Is it a little bit cheesy? Maybe. Do I care? Not really. Meanwhile, I'm preparing a rebellion in Sudan. And I'm also preparing one in Uganda because while I'm here, might as well try to get as much of it as I can. Germany starts Barbarossa. Now, I have noticed in this current build, like, the axes are really, really weak. They don't tend to really win anymore. We'll see how this plays out. It doesn't matter because we are about to finish our justification on Tanzania. They still don't have any friends. They won't get any friends. And we're just going to walk in there and take the territory we need. Speaking of Tanzania, goodbye. We'll declare war. They have no friends. And bada bing, bada boom, it's over. Ah, beautiful Tanzania. Again, the points don't get split between between all the participants so we can do whatever we want here. Submit our demands, confirm and exit and done. And that is the Lion King achieved painlessly, smoothly. We're done. We can take this game further. We can still have Uganda rise up. That will give us claims on a lot of these southern bits. We can have Sudan rise up. That will give us cores on the Blue Nile and the Upper Nile. Once we've done all that, we can continue down the King of Kings path towards the Empire of Aksum. Combine that with purchase obsolete ships should get us a small-ish navy. We can use that to invade Yemen and then form the Aksumite Empire. After which, we can still go and do either the one true heir of Solomon and really take on the allies in a straight fight if you want to. Or you can do towards African unity and do what we just did to East Africa to all of Africa. The choice is yours, really. This is a pretty interesting way of playing the game. I'm going to continue this game and see what we can do with Towards African Unity. But for the purpose of this video, this is where we'll end it. 1941, so relatively early. And this, can ga this game can still go anyway. Ethiopia has a couple of factories. It has some guns. It has a sizable army. It's got a stockpile of stuff. It it's actually a country that can do something now. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope I made up for my failure in my last Ethiopia game. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this next video too.